So this is our female orange squam or African bush viper. All right guys, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be looking at a bunch of my vipers that we have. We're gonna be taking them out and getting a good look at them, get hands on them, get some close-ups. So the first snake we're gonna take out is our female yellow insularis or Wittar Island pit viper here. She is a bit of a demon, so we're going to be careful when we get her out here. We're going to go ahead and use the hook to open the door. Yep. So here's a good look at a really healthy adult female yellow insularis. Everybody loves insularises. This is probably the least commonly kept uh, color phase in the U.S. at least. You see a lot of the greens and everyone loves the blue phase because it's a blue snake. Who doesn't love that? But the yellows just don't come over as imports as much and there aren't a whole lot of people that are trying to breed them in captivity and even less that have had success. So unfortunately, these beautiful snakes are rather hard to obtain in the United States, but I'm gonna hopefully be trying to breed these this coming year and maybe we'll get lucky and we can get some babies. So she's grabbed the hook here. That's the fun part about working with these arboreal vipers. Use the other one to help slide it off here. There we go. Grab the tail and switch to one hook. So yeah, this is a beautiful female yellow insularis here. And as you can see, she is a lot more calm outside of her enclosure than inside. So that's nice at least. Let's go ahead and put her back inside. All right guys, so now we're gonna go ahead and take out Komodo, our blue insularis. Our good sized blue insularis that we've had for several years now. He's doing really well. You can see that striking blue coloration that he has that everyone loves about this species. He doesn't really want to participate, so we're going to put him back. Alright, so he didn't really want to come out and play today, so we're not going to stress him out too much. We're just going to put him back in his enclosure, and we'll move on. All right, guys, now we're gonna move on to our orange female squam, as they're called in the US pet trade. Um, this is an African variable bush viper. This female specifically, just like the insularis, is uh, not very friendly to work with, but being a very small arboreal viper, they are pretty easy to deal with regardless of how much of a raging uh, lunatic they are, as you can see there. Uh, what are you doing? Stop doing that. Don't. 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 Hey, cut that out. Uh, just a note, if you do plan on keeping venomous snakes um, and like the look of these, they do not have a species-specific anti-venom to treat their bites. And um, although some people seem to think that squam venom is not very potent, it actually can be somewhat damaging, and I believe there have been fatalities. So if you do get tagged by one of these, you're going to be in a little bit of trouble. And the only way that they can treat a bite is um, with, I believe, other species antivenom has small amounts of overlap, such as the saw scale viper antivenom. So let's go ahead and put her back in her enclosure. Of course, she's going to come right back out and try to kill me. All right. Go ahead and close the door. Door is closed. Door is locked. And door is 
fully secure. Stop that. So now we're going to move on to our horn vipers. We have a decent number of horn vipers. So we're just going to take a look at one of them here. I got a large number as part of a collection that I purchased several months ago. This is one of the males that is actually going to a friend of mine, Nathan Jordan. A uh, very good venomous snake and just photographer in general. He's a very good photographer, specifically of venomous snakes, but he does a lot of other work. This is the male that he picked out that he wants. So, no, no, you're not going that way. That's the fun part about handling these guys. They do hook a little bit differently than your typical vipers as they are sidewinders. So you can see them moving sideways there. They do that to help uh, minimize heat on their body since they're found in desert environments. It helps distribute the amount of heat uh, that they feel on their body from that hot sun on the hot sand. So this just allows them to have a couple of small parts of their body uh, touching the sand, which is extremely hot during the day in the middle of the desert at any given time. So it allows them to not burn up, kind of. That was a desert horn viper. And now here, I will pull out one of their cousins. Just do this one since it's closest. This is in the same genus, Cerastes, another sidewinding viper that likes to bury themselves. This is the sand viper. They're an absolutely ridiculous looking species of snake. Also native to uh, the deserts of North Africa and um, parts of the Middle East as well. You can see how still they are. They rely heavily on that ability to blend in with the sand and to stay hidden underneath the surface of the sand. You can see they have this nice flat head and these eyes that are located uh, more towards the top of their head than the side like you would see on most snakes. And this allows them to see uh, above the surface of the sand when the rest of their body is below, kind of like an alligator or a crocodile. Uh, is able to see above the surface of the water with only part of their head exposed when their entire rest of their body is below the surface of the water. So that's just something neat about their anatomy, which has, um, you know, evolved over the years to allow them to become the, I'm not going to say predator that they are, but let I me mean, look at that thing. I don't know how you can consider that a predator, but they animal that they are to fill the niche that they do within their environment. So those are two very closely related species and they take up the same kind of role for the most part in their environment and they're found in the same geographic location as well. Um, so that's probably all of the vipers from this room that I want to take a look at but so now we're going to go ahead and take a look at some of the vipers in this room. Uh, our first viper we're going to look at is over here in this enclosure. We have the blue speckled rattlesnake. So we'll go ahead and we'll take... Darnell, chill, what the heck. We'll go ahead and we'll take him out and we'll take a closer look at him as well. So here we have our blue speckled rattlesnake, uh, one of the most beautiful rattlesnakes in the world, in my opinion. These guys, like I said, are only found in a couple select mountain ranges in the state of Arizona. He's not super um, helpful at handling. He likes to try and get up to my hand, but I'm obviously not going to allow him to do that. But here, we can just get some footage of him on the floor here. You can see that beautiful blue and white kind of Oreo looking uh, texture to him. He's very cool. 
all the speckles have that kind of um, offset and cookies and cream kind of speckling. It just comes in a, ver a variety of different colors with this example being that blue and white offset, which I think is the prettiest. You can see he's got probably about eight buttons. Actually, he's probably closer to 10 on the rattle, uh, which is pretty good. So my Batwing Rattlesnake only has like four, and he broke one of them off when he was younger because he's stupid. So we'll go ahead and get this guy back in the enclosure here. And there we go. They're kind of the ball python of the venomous world. They just sit there and don't really do much, um, which I get. I'm not a huge Kaboon Viper guy, but this was part of the collection I purchased a couple months ago. And so I figured I would just keep him since he's uh, a pretty nice looking one. So we'll go ahead and we'll get him out. Uh, if he's willing to participate, uh, sir, I'm gonna need you to move your, no, no. No. Yep, go that way. There you go. No, stop huffing. Don't you huff at me. Alright, so we have this nice big hook to help support his body, although I honestly don't think he really wants to come out. He is um, being very audibly loud, and that is not a good sign. That's one of the few defensive markers of this species because they really don't do a whole lot and they are lightning quick on that strike, so you have to be able to read uh, the other defensive markers. Cottonhead, obviously a copperhead, cotton melt hybrid. These have not been documented to exist in the wild yet. However, I would not be surprised if they do. Um, she's a little bit uh, twitchy, um, which I don't know if it's a side effect of her being a hybrid or if it's just uh, part of her behavior, but she is a little bit twitchy. She might twitch out of there. All right, she didn't, so whatever. Um, but she does tend to become a lot better once I get her out and she realizes that um, I mean her no harm. All right, so here we have our cotton head. You can really see the mixture of the copper head and cotton mouth in her pattern there. She's a very nice example. If you take a look at her head, you will see um, what a lot of people call the Zorro mask that uh, is typical of cotton mouths and used as an identifier by a lot of people. Uh, but obviously you have that off the kind of offset different shades of copper or brown, which is very typical of a copper head. Um, this is an average adult size individual. And you can see the tail kind of has that dark, um, kind of dark shading like a cottonmouth would as an adult as well. She seems to think that she's arboreal here. Uh, I don't know, I don't know if she's been talking to the Insularis or the Squams, but uh, I, I would say she's mistaken, but I think she's doing pretty well right now, so. I'm actually going to lower this to the ground because I don't really want her falling and she's not exactly built for climbing. Go ahead and put some leaves back in there. And she is secured. All right. So now I believe we only have one Viper left. So here we have the Batwing Rattlesnake. Um, you can see you've got a little bit of a band right there below the eye, and that normal Eastern Diamondback pattern is kind of compressed with the Timber Rattlesnake chevrons, and it gives you these weird, uh, weird aberrancies in the pattern and these weird thinner uh, kind of diamonds down further on the back. These guys are known to get over seven feet long, uh, which is obviously very, very large uh, for a rattlesnake or any viper in general. I mean, that's, that's a huge viper. These guys have been found a handful of times in the wild, 
and I would not like to get bit by the snake, that is for sure. You can see their tail is rather dark. It's actually not completely black. If you look really closely, you can see a faint, faint outline of banding on the tail, but it is mostly dark, uh, just like a timber rattlesnake's rattle would be, or uh, the base of the tail would be for them. Uh, absolutely beautiful hybrid. Taking my hand, get a hook under him, and we'll get him back in his enclosure here. All right, so now we're down to our last viper. We have our red spotted or Jerdones pit viper. This is a close relative to uh, the more commonly known Mang Shin Viper. He's actually really dark. Um, sometimes he'll be very, very bright, like green and red, but right now he looks a lot darker than he normally does. He is not exceptionally friendly. Um, as you can tell by the look he's giving me right now, uh, he probably would love nothing more than to give me a tag on the hand here, but we're not gonna uh, let him do that because that would be major, major cringe. These guys are uh, like a semi-arboreal species. I will see him climb in to different spots in his enclosure, which is why he's in this uh, specific enclosure. It would be very, very cool to actually breed these um, because this is a species you really don't even see at places like zoos. They're just, they're just so uncommon. But they are uh, definitely one of my favorites in my collection, personally, and... I, I, I'm sure a lot more people would keep these um, if they were available. So that was a tour of all of the Vipers that I currently own. Thank you guys for watching my video. If you are not already subscribed, please make sure to do that. I think I'm sitting at like 5% of the audience is subscribed. We definitely want to get those numbers up. And if you haven't already, like the video as well. It definitely helps me out a ton. Thank you all for watching. See you later.